Hey everyone, welcome to the Open Source Founder Podcast. Joining us today is Aiden Bai, creator of Million.js, the open source project, and the new company behind. Aiden, thank you so much for joining. I'm super excited to do this and would love to start with some information about your personal background and then how Million got started. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I'm a big fan of the podcast, big fan of uh, the bounty program and all that. Thank you. <laughs> right. Let's kick it off. Are you, you're 19 years old and currently in college or am I wrong? Yeah, I, uh, I actually just dropped out uh, in January. So 19, <laughs> just dropped out and then now I'm living the dream. <laughs> <laughs> Phenomenal. Wow. And how long, how many years has a million been going for? Around three years now. That is crazy. So what, like 15, 16 years old, living with your parents and kind of like releasing exactly. this piece on the internet, right? Exactly. That's... Yeah. It's a lot of, lot of interesting things. It's like working through school and then just working on the side project and suddenly blowing up and just a lot of fun, fun stuff. Very fun, very unique. And congratulations. I think recently you also went through Git Round, the open source accelerator by Joseph Jacks and Peter Richelson also helping. Uh, tell us about that. Yeah. Git Round is amazing. Um, I kind of applied on a whim. Actually, Peter was like, Either JJ or Pierre was like, yo, check this out. I was like, okay, I'll look at it. And then I was just like randomly applied. JJ was like, you're a great fit this for, for this program. And I was like, great, amazing. Um, it was really cool um, seeing other commercial open source companies uh, like be in the batch and also be able to interact with them and call up JJ basically anytime or Pierre anytime and just ask for advice, which is like super valuable. Um, Overall, get round is really cool. You should apply for batch two and yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah, I think these are the very best people in this industry to get advice from. And so congratulations for that. And then there's also Y Combinator, right? Yeah. And then, <laughs> then uh, anyway, I was like, you know what? Or like December, I was like, you know what? What if I applied to YC? And then now I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so what's, uh, what's that like? The, the program is running at the moment. Right. So what's going on? Yeah. Why is great? Like, it's really cool. Same, same vibe, like being able to lean on like, uh, people that you would never like think of interfacing with, like founder of Scribd or like founder of Lever. Like these are big companies and like very scary companies. And they've gone through all these like experiences and they're just there. You can just send them a Slack DM or email or just like schedule an in-person meeting and be able to just ask them all the questions that you have. Like last time I was like, how do I do enterprise sales? And <laughs> Nate was like, oh, here's the breakdown. This is what you do. This is what you do. And it was like such an amazing experience just being able to, um, I don't know, just talk to like these really cool people like in person and also like so directly and be able to get some, some, so much like real advice from them. So I, I reckon it has been very beneficial so far and it's only been so little time and it's a lifetime thing, right? You go through YC, it's not just the bots. It is what comes after too. That adds a lot of value. That's, that's excellent. There's an in-person component. You went uh, there in person, right? Yeah, exactly. I'm living in Berkeley right now. Phenomenal, phenomenal. Good for you, man. That's exciting. And of course, you know, along with the open source project, there is the company building aspect and I understand this is new for you. Uh, what has happened so far? How have you experienced it? If you could tell us a little bit about uh, that aspect. Yeah. Yeah, I can't speak too much about the product because we haven't launched yet, but it's been really fun. Like every day I wake up at like 10 a.m. and I grind till like 5 a.m. the next day. And so I mean, it's, it's really cool because normally like just coming from as like a student perspective where it's like, yeah, uh, maybe I'll go to a class and do the homework and then spend the rest of time like coding. It's it's so like it's it's a very freeing experience, like being able to do something that you've always tried to do over some like barrier and finally be able to do it like full time. Um I mean there's a lot of challenges, right? Like how do you like manage a team? How do you talk to enterprises? How do you talk to customers? How do you talk think about business? How do you think about market? So there's like a lot of things that, that like have to think about. Um, but never had more fun in my life. So that's a good thing, I think. Super exciting, absolutely. And uh, the, the the team, talking about the team and now with the new funding, of course, and the new support, 
you have the ability to grow. So how are you approaching this? What's your strategy like? Have new people joined so far or planning to extend the team more this year? Yeah, so we have two people in the JavaScript ecosystem uh, that are working with us, one from SolidJS, one from like Coimanders, Vtest, if you use these tools. Um, and then uh, in person, I have two two good friends, like one that works on machine learning uh, and then another one works on like infrastructure, cloud infrastructure, that type of thing. And so uh, a bit of a skill, like range of skill sets that I personally don't have and also people I enjoy working with and can can see myself waking up for the next 10 years working side by side. I love it. That's, that's, that's great. And going back to what you said about, you know, enterprise sales, that whole motion, um, anything that you've learned so far or something that you might like to highlight from the resources and advice you got from the peers at YC or Gitran? Yeah, a uh, couple of things. Um, like, uh, being, like, I guess the first one is like, um, like one of the most important things is understanding how enterprises think. Like, who are you talking to? Like, why? Like, what are their incentives? And like, what are they concerned with you? Like, I don't know if you like you probably probably read like these. If you're your listener, like you probably like uh, already kind of know this, but like enterprises don't want to bet on a startup that can potentially flake in like a year or like die in a year, right? And so like, how do you convince them of this? And like commercial open source is a great option because like you could just say like, we'll provide enterprise support as long as we live. And if we die, you're open, we're open source anyway. So just use us, right? Um, but like, yeah, like longevity is like a concern for a lot of enterprises. Um, like, especially in big organizations, like their incentives are not the product is good. Like you, you have to like, convince them of another angle for example like oh um <coughs> excuse me um like this will make your developers more productive if you're talking to like a pm or something whereas a developer it'd be, it'd be like this will make your workflow better or if you're talking to like a head of sales it's probably more like we will make your sales increase by this many this much or something like that and so playing to like people's incentives is like huge importance for enterprise sales um I also found like for early stage, uh, it's not, it's more about selling yourself as a person than selling the actual product. Like uh, from what I observed, like the product is like, because the product won't be amazing at the time. So it's like very hard to pitch a good demo. You can pitch a demo, but like, it's not hard to pitch like a, oh, this is a comprehensive product you probably will buy. It's more like, you know what? I want to be here to fix your performance issues. And that's kind of like the, the strategy I'm going with. Um, what else? I guess like um, top-down enterprise sales is pretty hard, like especially uh, nowadays, especially in this economy. Um, so, uh, found that bottom-up is usually easier, um, but it's there, there's trade-offs between those two. I guess that's excellent advice, actually, and you know, sounds like it's coming from someone who spent ten years doing this. Uh, yes, in a few months. So, hats off to you for that. That's that's great. And then all these conversations that you've been having so far, how did they come about? Uh, were they already users of the open source software or came to you or did you actually do any outbound as well? Uh, I actually did zero outbound for this. Like a lot of it is from mm -hmm. personal brand. So like Twitter, whatever. And then GitHub, like GitHub repo, like users. Like uh, it's really cool that open sourcing do this. Like I literally just like, post like a random tweet of like oh i'm working on something <laughs> and people just email me of whatever they're working on so um hats off to open source i guess phenomenal and so that brings us to my my follow-up question which is about marketing about building in public creating content generating that inbound um first thing is if you have any advice on that because a lot of people are trying to get started doing more of this feel like they don't do enough and then the second thing is if you would go as far as saying that it's actually today a necessity for someone building a startup or for an engineer building product mm -hmm. to build those skills, cultivate them, and distribute uh, their product to the world this way. Yeah, marketing is a hard thing. Like honestly, I am also pretty lucky in this regard. <laughs> like I don't, I have no clue how I'm here, um, but uh, I think it's um, it comes down to a couple things. Um, one is like be very like un decently unconventional. Like a lot of people, like companies, are going for like the linear clone approach, like in terms of their branding, 
it's like oh yeah we look like linear and it's like okay great but also i can't differentiate you from the other ten thousand websites right i say this when our website looks like linear uh but <laughs> uh like i don't know um differentiating is pretty important um like i think one of the most important things is like being able to like there's strategies like you can like for example with million what we do is like i post like flashy apple videos sort of apple style videos that people like watch and it just gains their attention and like wow i'm gonna check this out um uh also like technical blogs are pretty pretty good uh that that works for us um but i don't think it's like very universal like one thing is super <laughs> universal though is like branding like like for example like when you think a million like you maybe think of like speed fast virtual dom whatever but you also think of like this person like oh yeah this is a super mm -hmm. thing, right and so like being able to like have something that's something different associated with your with your product is pretty important. Um, like I can think of a couple of examples. Like uh, like Vercel is like black or white triangle or something like that. And then like or uh, Agoya is like oh the the prettier uh, prettier like bounty open source thingy or something like that. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, absolutely. That that makes sense. And when it comes to like the actual nitty gritty of like making the time to post every day or maybe producing a super high quality video. Uh, and, and when people start off, like it feels like you're shouting out in the void, right? And you don't immediately mm -hmm. see that return. So what would you tell folks uh, who are at that stage about doing it, how much trust they should put into that process? And, you know, there's an opportunity cost. They don't do outbound. They don't do customer success. They're just shouting out in the void on Twitter or whatever. So yeah, what's to say here? I think outbound is pretty hard unless you're like an ex really, really good at it already. Um, like I know like the mistake a lot of founders do is I actually I don't I don't have no experience to say, but like the reason I didn't do outbound was um because like I did it once and it was like super unsuccessful. Like maybe I got like one reply to like a hundred emails and I got my email banned. So <laughs> like it was not very worth it. Um like what I found was uh People will come to you if they find what you produce is like interesting, and it that can that stuff is only interesting if it's like interesting to yourself. Like for me, it was like virtual dom. Like this thing is like a super interesting thing, and like nobody knows about this. And I was like, here's what I made, and people are like attracted to that, right? Like something that you find generally interesting, there are other people who also potentially could find it interesting. One hundred percent. Take us back to like the very first days when you were building the very first versions, making the very first announcements. Uh, what did that look like and how much did things change sort of like from stage to stage, quarter to quarter, like during those first years? Yeah, first year and a half, basically no stars. Uh, there were stars, but like basically no traction at all. Uh, I was like posting a lot on like Dev2, if you know that. Also mm -hmm. Hacker News, Reddit. Uh, and I was probably getting banned, shadow banned on all those services. But uh, yeah, I was just like, like I don't know. Um, it was pretty hard to like, uh, par partially because the product, the, the actual source product was pretty bad. Like it wasn't, like I advertised it as like a fast virtual DOM, but it wasn't really that fast. It was actually slower than React at the time. <laughs> so like partially that and also uh, I was like, like, I, I was like trying at the time I was just trying to like get traction. I was like forcibly trying to get traction. And at mm -hmm. some point I just out and I was like, you know what? I'm not I don't want to try this anymore. Like this sucks. Uh, and so I took a month break and I went back to and just started tinkering on like actually deep diving into virtual bomb and just tinkering on that. Um and what I found was that there was this really cool project called Block Dom. And Block Dom was a really cool approach to Virtual Dom that was like way faster. Uh, and today it's like one of the like, top five fastest frameworks on the benchmark. Um, and I was like, okay, what if I clone Block Dom, but applied it to React? And so I spent a couple months working on that. And I released it to the world and it just blew up because like people are really resonate with that. Like who doesn't want a faster React? Um, and so the key insight there was like, um, I could post how much, however much I want, but what really attracted people was that key insight of like, they can use their existing uh, React, uh, have faster virtual DOM, and I on the side I had little tricks like posting technical articles or like flashy videos or whatever. Absolutely. So it really starts and ends with the product. 
if that's the way yeah. you say it. And then the rest is auxiliary activities to drive more awareness, drive more traction. And now this is a time where you're just building it for yourself to improve your own skills and to create your network. At what point like, did it occur to you at the back of your head that, hey, there could be something commercial here, uh, an occupation for me, you know, a, a career to be built here, uh, a company to be created that was recently created. So when did that kick in? Yeah, uh, frankly, like Million Open Source, like the open source project is not commercializable. I don't plan to commercialize it. And I think it's better as a public good, right? Like who does i mean like it'd be it'd be great like everyone has slow react apps like why don't um why don't we like have something for that uh so forever remain open source um but i was like while i was building million like while i had traction people using it like people started reaching out to me mm -hmm. and like it wasn't like random developers like there were a lot of random developers but also like some engineers at some very big companies started reaching out where they're like yeah we're trying to use million and because the React app is really, really slow. And I was like, hmm, why is your React app slow? Tell me more. Um, and so I kind of went through this process and figured out, like, there's this huge epidemic of, like, really slow web apps. And these engineers can't fix them because of two reasons. Like, the first reason is it's really hard to fix performance issues. Like, it takes months. Like, people, like, buy Sentry or some random APM and just, like, throw it in there and still can't figure it out. They like, hire a performance consultant. And it takes months for them to solve. Uh, the second part is like people don't understand how to write performant web apps and honestly it's not their fault like um if it was their fault then uh i probably wouldn't be commercialized i was probably just yelling at them uh, like some people do but but like uh like i was like okay this is an issue people like really 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 want to solve it and you know web performance directly leads to higher sales better user experience better user retention so there's like real business um business needs for higher, faster web performance. Um, so I was like, okay, you know what? Let's try to build something out of this. And uh, of course, you're not gonna help but ask what forms this can be taking. Uh, first off, like my understanding is that when all these companies, all these engineers from these big companies came to you, some sort of like consulting arrangement could come about where you know, you're actually digging in, helping them improve their code base, improve their performance, and then there could be some user-facing tools, you know, with AI, for instance, where you could actually mm. use uh, the performance of your application, more hands-off approach. So these and any other sort of like formats that came on the table, thinking about exploring, what could you share today about this? We're currently going with a top-down approach, top-ish down approach, just a little bit of a mix of like middle to top versus in top bottom. Um, mainly because um, uh, large enterprises make money. That's just the reality. Uh, and also large enterprises have the highest need for web performance. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it just like happens to be a great market for us to, to go into. Um, one thing is uh, like large enterprises have high complexity code bases. So like, you know, like normal startups or small projects, they're pretty clean. There's an XJS project or React. Like, some of these large enterprises have extremely complex pipelines. Like they use things to render other things that like you never think should happen. Or actually it should, probably shouldn't happen, but they're doing it anyway. Like they're they're either on like an old React version or they're using some backend framework to render front end stuff. And it's like huge, um, huge like technical debt. And so um, being able to solve that for them is like extremely, uh, extremely valuable. That's how, at least how we're thinking of it right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, absolutely. And I mean, so it is a work in progress when it comes to like the formats this will take. And of course, you know, you said earlier that Million, you want it to be a public good, something everyone has access to for free. But of course, this gives you the opportunity to build a lot of auxiliary services uh, and new products around it, having the food in the door and the place in people's code base and, and minds. And so, I mean, that's something to bet on. And uh, it's, it makes total sense that you went down this commercial path and where you have these investors backing you. Um, what else oh. has been new for you like over these past months when it comes to like your daily activities or something where you're like, oh, five months ago or eight months ago, I was totally clueless about this. I was a moron. Oh, wow, there's a new world here. I didn't understand. Uh, 
if, if you could share something like that for this? Uh, probably a lot, but also <laughs> very little. Like I, I probably learn like new things every day. It's like kind of crazy. Um, I don't know. Like, if you're skipping school to like work on the pro your project or product, like probably should like gap if you can. Like especially if you have um. I don't know, like, bef like during school, I was pretty, like, risk adverse. And I was, like, I was working on this thing. I was skipping lectures, but I wouldn't, like, accept the fact that I should, probably should gap or drop out. Um, and, like, I had all of these cards in my hand where I was, like, you know what? Worst case scenario, I just get a job or just return to school. Um, I don't know. Like, if you're, if you're someone in that position, you probably should seriously consider it. Uh, at least for me, it was very valuable. Um, uh, Reading is good. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't read before at all, uh, and I had I like I met a friend who like all, like sends me random books and articles. I've been starting reading, and like I've learned a lot from that. Um, I don't know. Talking to customers is good as well. Like I used to build things that are magical. The first year and a half, I just built things that are like based on an imaginary thought in my head that like what a developer wants, and I like after that I just realized what they actually need. Um, I think the last thing is like uh I was I was just talking about this actually. Um like generally people well actually I don't know. Like if you're a person who makes like very rational decisions, like you should st you should stop making like you should open your bounds of rationality. So like normally people like they close their bounds to a certain like okay, based on these conditions I'm going to make this rational decision. I found like a lot of the decisions I made in the past like six months were extremely irrational <laughs> like applying to yc last minute <laughs> or like applying to get round or like dropping out of school or like pretty irrational like um decisions but it just happened to work out and uh i guess some sometimes you need a little bit of randomness to, to get you further that's uh towards of an entrepreneur absolutely and and, and i feel like sometimes we even self-sabotage with you know rationality we just talk ourselves out of doing you know what needs totally. to be done. And I feel like, especially if you're starting a startup and you're like a very strong engineer who could be, you know, working at a very big company, earning, you know, very big salary and so on. And you're like, oh, now I have to do this shit work, which is like, because a lot of, mm -hmm. time, a lot of times, like something, that yeah. the job is a lot of times shit work, right? Um, but, but I feel like, yeah, if we just silence, the, like rational part, being yeah. like, what the hell are you doing here? Like, this doesn't make any sense. And we just grind it through. We can be surprised with what comes on the other end. And, and it does take time. I mean, how old were you when you wrote your first line of code? It's probably sixth grade. It was sixth grade on my, like, library's Dell desktop. <laughs> wow. Did, the, did, they, did your family, like, sort of, like, have a background there and you followed? Or is it just something you picked up on your own? And found your interest earlier. Yeah, I grew up with a computer. So like the first time I actually touched a computer was, well, I probably touched a computer before that, but like, like, um, like first time I actually used a computer was like my school's library's like desktop computer. Um, I remember like being in like, not even Notepad++, like Notepad, Windows Notepad, and writing my first HTML file. And it was really fun, really fun <laughs> Did you have any classmates or peers where you were like geeking out on these things together, or has it been more of a lone wolf kind of journey for you? Well, in it's a lone wolf. Yeah, it's like younger. Like I've really struggled to find like community. Like if people were interested. Like people around me. Like I don't know. Like they had Xboxes or like play games or whatever. I was like, you know what? I like I like doing this weird thing where um I I make the, put these weird like HTML thingies and then it just outputs cool websites um, <laughs> but, yeah and uh, to people who are it's crazy to say this but who are like still in middle school or high school or people like in college and i really hope that you know when we publish this interview this can act as, a, as an example to them of an alternative way right um what would you say to them directly and, and you don't have to tell them oh drop out of school and like go do this <laughs> what are the risks involved or are there really risks involved? Because, you know, like when I started as an entrepreneur, like, as you said, similarly, like worst case scenario, I get a job in the end. And even if this fails, it feels like I will come out sort of like 
better and stronger as an individual, the skills that we'll build, the networks that we'll build. So, yeah, what, what, what would you say to people kind of like around your age who are contemplating a startup, career in software, or building their own things? Yeah, it depends on what your incentives are. I remember JD telling me this, actually. Uh, Joseph Jacks, OSS Capital, he's like, we had this one hour meeting and I was like so tired, but like, I remember him telling me like, yeah, Aiden, you know, my, you know, my threshold for knowing when someone's like founder or not, whether they can't like, whether they can't stop thinking about it at all times. Like, like, um, if you're in like, I don't know, like, what would I, what was this, what was the shit I pulled? Like, if you're like in the hallway, like hiding in a corner, like coding on a million or your own projects, like, that's probably a good sign you're you're gonna be a good founder. Like, um, but if you're just like LARPing for like, I don't know, LinkedIn likes or something like that, it's probably not a good idea. Totally. That's that's it's really nice. I like it. Um if you could uh and and you know, unless you have some more words of wisdom here to, to share with us, maybe you could share your screen and actually give us a glimpse of the repository, the website, maybe something we can expect. You said there's a launch coming up. So we can transition. Yes. So, yeah. I don't know if this episode will come out, but uh, here's the million website if you haven't seen it. Um, basically, we're working on a... Uh, basically, a million is a drop-in replacement for React. It just basically makes React really, really fast. Um, it's pretty. It's used by a lot of people. It's pretty fast if you look here. Um, and yeah, it's it's really easy to set up. I, I mean, I literally just... You can literally just... Uh, do this to install it like so um it's a pretty like lit like a literal like drop in optimizing thingy for react so check it out if you want to we're releasing v3 on um february 2nd 2023 um so a lot of it's it's going to be very exciting there's going to be like a bunch of announcements there's a launch party too right i saw on discord Yes, so, yes. Absolutely. I, I didn't organize that, but it, it will. It will. <laughs> there will be a launch party. <laughs> Sweet. Perfect. Uh, all right, mm. and and then maybe contributing to the project, people who might like to also check out the code base, if we can show that as well. Sure. Um, we have like a contributing guide on our uh, GitHub somewhere. Uh, this is so bad that I don't know where it is. Right here. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so see. we have like guidelines on how to yeah guidelines how to like submit bugs how to open PRs. Um, Wait, I cannot what, see it. Sorry, I don't see the GitHub window. Oh, Maybe. sorry about that. Oh, I hate window sharing. Let's see. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So we have uh, some information about submitting bugs. Uh, like how to suggest good features, how to make PRs, how to set up the project what each part of the code base does. So it's a pretty comprehensive guide. And like our Discord community, we have like a thousand people and like we have like 10 contributors who are willing to help you. So if you ever have any problems, you can join the Discord, um, which is somewhere, somewhere here. Uh, yeah, I mean, just join the Discord and um, probably someone will help you or I, will, my, I myself will directly help you. That's that's perfect. Thank you so much for showing us the repository. Any last mm -hmm. words you might like to leave people with? Yeah, I really appreciate the opportunity. Like, I'm very young, so take any advice or like anything I said with a grain of salt. So, like, very much so. Like, um, advice is overrated uh, unless it really, like, you really, it really helps you. Um, yeah. <laughs> totally. And where people can follow you online. Uh, just look up Aiden by B A I, um, and then you'll probably find me somewhere. Twitter, YouTube, Twitter, GitHub, uh, anywhere. <laughs> Sounds great. All right. Well, this was phenomenal. I'm super impressed, just like everyone else. Thank you for making the time. I know it's a very, very busy period, and we're excited for the launch in February and everything new to come. Wishing you happy growth in 2024 and beyond. Thanks so much once again for joining, and uh, I'll catch you later, Aiden. All right. Thank you.